dear students we were discussing about the structure of bacteria and we discussed the overall structure about the appearance the different shapes it attains then about the uh, the overall features of the typical bacteria then about the bacterial chromosome about plasmids we mentioned about ribosomes also we mentioned about the binary fission shown by the bacteria then about the differences uh, between eukaryotes and prokaryotes the cell cell of the eukaryotes and prokaryotes next we were moving to the different uh, parts in a bit detail means different parts of the bacteria we'll see in a bit detail not in two a molecular level we are not going into but we are just going into the morphological features of each structural parts of the bacteria so starting from outside we were talking about bacterial appendages so bacterial appendages we can consider pili and flagella as the bacterial appendages pili also known as fimbriae this is because pili are of two types and the small pili are known as fimbriae sometimes it is known as fim fimbriae and the other pili which is involved in conjugation is known as sex pili so pili are short hair like structures that we see on the surface of the bacterial cell and this used this is used for adherence that is to to stick to each other to stick to surfaces and these short pili are often referred to as fimbriae and the other one that is which is specialized for conjugation is known as sex pilus you can see in this diagram over the right side you can see the sex pilus between two bacteria which is involved in conjugation as well as you can see the fimbriae also short hair like structures all over the surface of the bacteria so this is pili and fimbriae in conjugating bacteria you can see the sex pili that is also known as the conjugation pilus and the fimbriae that is known as the attachment pili this is conjugation between two bacteria and this is sex pili is used to transfer certain genetic elements between one bacteria and the other bacteria so pili they are tiny hollow tube like projections on the body surface of the bacteria on the cellular surface of the bacteria and this terms pili and fimbriae are often used interchangeably in certain textbooks it is referred to as fimbriae and in certain textbooks it is referred to as pili but most often the short pili are referred to as fimbriae and those pili which are involved in conjugation are known, are known as sex pili so they are bacteria are having two types of pili attachment pili and sex pili so attachment pili or fimbriae are numerous short fine hair like appendages and these are often characteristic of gram negative bacteria attachment pili that is fimbriae are often characteristic of gram negative bacteria and these are not involved in mo motility motility is often uh, or attained with the help of flagella it is not attained with the help of fimbriae fimbriae are for attachment to surfaces and the sex pili or conjugation pili that is the other other pili these are long tube like structures they are long tube like projections from bacteria connecting the protoplasm of two mating bacteria means those bacteria which are involved in conjugation so they are two long uh, they are long tube like projection which uh, connect the protoplasm of two bacteria which is involved in conjugation and they help in transferring genetic material during conjugation this uh, sex pili or the conjugation pili next about the flagella this flagella are complex structures which are involved in motility so according to the number of flagella which is present in the bacteria we can give uh, group them into different classes if there is only one flagella monotrichus and uh, if there are a large number of flagella from one end it is amphitrichus and if there is one flagella on both side on both uh, poles of the bacteria then we can say it is lophotrichus 
and if there are large number of flagella all over the body of the uh, bacteria that is body means just only one cell is there all over this cell if large number of uh, this flagella are present then it is known as peritrichus in this image which is given here you can see the different parts of the flagella that uh, um, you can see the rings there are two rings for this flagella that is the rotor stator there is the s-ring m-ring and for the stator there are studs and c-ring this is placed in the inner plasma membrane and in the outer plasma membrane you can see the brushing brushing ring it is having two rings l-ring and p-ring and there is the hook which is attaching the filament to this rings to these different rings and this different rings all together is known as the basal body this this structure is the basal body uh, or this is uh, um, attached with a structure even below and all together this is known as the basal body so we can say that each flagellum is having a prominent filament outside which is extending outside there is a basal body that is embedded in the cell and a short curved hook that links the filament to the basal body okay these are the three main parts of the flagella uh, of a bacteria that is a prominent filament which is extending outside a basal body which is embedded in the cell which is uh, consisted of these several rings and a short curved hook which is uh, connecting the filament with the basal body so about the flagella so we, we know that most of the bacteria are motile and this motile bacteria use flagella for this purpose and uh, the classification we discussed in the last slide the different uh, based on the number of flagella present and where it is present and the structure and features of this prokaryote flagella it is entirely different from that of eukaryote flagella eukaryote flagella it is different it is made up of different proteins and it is the structure is entirely different so prokaryote flagella these are long appendages which rotate by means of a motor located just under the cytoplasmic membrane there is motor a motor attached it means a structure which is acting as a motor to uh, what to move the flagella and the flagella or the flagellum singular we call flagellum this flagella is made up of protein subunits known as flagellin and each flagellum has a prominent filament basal body and a curved hook and this filament of this flagellum is made up of protein subunits known as flagellin and the diameter of prokaryote flagellum is about 20 nanometer and this is rotated this flagella is rotated by means of a motor apparatus it means it is a structure which is uh, uh, functioning as a motor to turn this flagella that's why it is known as motor apparatus that is placed in the plasma membrane and this will allow this uh, cell to swim in fluid environments and in contrast to the eukaryote flagellum this prokaryote flagellum is not covered by a plasma membrane that is also one striking difference it is not covered by a plasma membrane so this is the structure of a uh, bacterial flagellum Gram uh, gram-negative bacterial flagellum you can see the hook the filament and the rings which are embedded in the uh, cell membrane several rings are there inner ring outer ring next about the glycocalyx glycocalyx this is a sugar coat or a carbohydrate coat which is found over the bacterial cell wall which is found covering the bacteria like a calyx it is a sugar coat or a uh, what coat made up of uh, carbohydrate moieties and if this glycocalyx is tightly bound to the bacteria bacterial cell wall we can call it a capsule okay, and what is the function it protect and prevents the bacteria from drying out and also it will protect from phagocytes and it is slimy this glycocalyx is slimy and it is often a significant component of biofilms 
in this structure this uh, this picture shows bacteria with glycocalyx so the glycocalyx it is a carbohydrate enriched coating that covers the outside of many eukaryotic it is also seen in eukaryotic cells but mainly in prokaryotic cells uh, like bacteria and when in when it is seen in eukaryotic cells the glycocalyx it can be a factor used for recognition of the cell okay so the, it is present only in certain eukaryotic cell glycocalyx but in most bacteria we see this glycocalyx and in uh, when bacterial cells when in bacterial cells this is present it provides protective coat for the host from the host factors that is the function it is providing protection from the host factors host immune system or host digestive enzymes from such things it is offering a protection to the bacteria so this is the uh, picture of a like um, a bacteria with a glycocalyx that is transmission electron micrograph of bacillus subtilis bacterium with hair like glycocalyx visible surrounding the cell membrane you can see the hair like uh, glycocalyx which is uh, surrounding the cell membrane next is about the bacterial envelope so we are uh, what uh, from outside we are going into the bacteria okay outside we saw the fimbriae they say conjugation pili then the flagellum then we saw the glycocalyx then inside inside the glycocalyx there is the bacterial envelope so what is this bacterial envelope this bacterial envelope is made up of three principal layers that is the outer layer membrane then the peptidoglycan cell wall and an inner membrane this is the bacterial envelope okay and in these three principal layers the outer membrane is seen only in gram negative bacteria we don't see gram outer membrane in gram positive bacteria in gram positive bacteria bacterial envelope is made up of the peptidoglycan cell wall and the inner membrane in gram negative bacteria bacterial envelope is made up of outer membrane peptidoglycan cell wall and the inner membrane inner membrane is also known as cytoplasmic membrane so this is the uh, bacterial envelope uh, it is given bacterial cell wall but it is not the cell wall means just the peptidoglycan layer cell wall of bacteria is made up of peptidoglycan that we already discussed so this is the structure of bacterial envelope because the plasma membranes are also shown here the membranes the inner membrane and outer membrane is also shown here so this is the structure of a bacterial envelope we can see and look at the gram positive bacterial envelope that is which is shown in the left side you can see this envelope is made up of inner plasma membrane it is marked plasma membrane and the outer cell wall you can see the plasma membrane and the cell wall plasma membrane is made up of lipid bilayer and proteins embedded in between this lipid bilayer then the cell wall can be seen which is a peptidoglycan layer and in this uh, peptidoglycan layer we can see ticoic acids as well as lipoticoic acids and this cell wall is made up of layers of peptidoglycan they are polymers polymers of glycan molecules that we will discuss later about the peptidoglycan layer so this is the envelope of a gram positive bacteria now we'll look into the envelope of a gram negative bacteria this is the envelope of a gram negative bacteria here you can see the plasma membrane that is the inner membrane okay plasma membrane is considered as the inner membrane or the cytoplasmic membrane then outer to this uh, plasma membrane or the inner membrane the cell wall the thin thin cell wall here the cell wall is thin you can see it is marked peptidoglycan that is the cell wall then outer to the cell wall or this peptidoglycan layer you can see the outer membrane also so this is the envelope of the envelope of the gram negative bacteria here you can see this outer envelope is connected to the peptidoglycan using lipoproteins and both these membranes are lipid bilayers with proteins embedded in between and here you can also see complex proteins like porins outs in the outer membrane porins will also be present 
in the case of gram negative bacteria and another important structure that we see here is the lipopolysaccharides in the outer membrane lipopolysaccharides these are act, this will be acting as endotoxins they are toxic to many animals this lipopolysaccharides they are considered as endotoxins so here we don't see the ticoic acid or lipoticoic acid as we see in the gram positive bacteria so these are the bacteria this are the bacterial envelopes so about the outer membrane this is found only in gram negative bacteria outer membrane here also this is another picture showing the different the bacterial envelopes of gram positive and gram negative bacteria the first one showing the envelope of gram positive bacteria and second one showing the envelope of gram negative bacteria the gram positive bacteria is having an inner uh, membrane inner membrane that is cell membrane or inner membrane with a cell wall cell wall is marked peptidoglycan here because it is made up of peptidoglycan it is a polymer of glycan units and uh, known as peptidoglycan so it is marked peptidoglycan that is the cell cell wall and you can see ticoic acid lipoticoic acid and ticoic acids in the case of gram negative you can see the inner membrane then the cell wall that is peptidoglycan a thin layer and outer to the peptidoglycan layer that is the cell wall you can see the outer membrane also there you can see porins complex protein channels porins are also shown here so this is another picture showing the envelope bacterial envelope of gram positive and gram negative bacteria and this gram negative bacteria i already told there are there is lipopolysaccharides which is acting as endotoxins so about the bacterial cell wall okay bacterial cell wall we just saw in the uh, pictures the bacterial cell wall which is very thick in gram positive and thin in gram negative bacteria so what is this cell wall made up of bacterial cell wall made up of it is composed of peptidoglycan that's why it is marked peptidoglycan there instead of cell wall because it is made up of peptidoglycan and what is this peptidoglycan it is polysaccharides plus proteins so this uh, peptidoglycan it is a macromolecule it is a polysaccharide repeating sugars it is a polymer repeating sugars which sugars nag and nam that is n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid and these repeating sugars these polymers these polymers uh, produced out of nag and nam that is n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid they are cross linked these sheets are cross linked with short chains of amino acids mostly tetrapeptides and this the peptidoglycan that we see in bacteria it is unique and it is known as murine and it forms a tough outer coat it prevents the rupture of the bacterial cell it protects the cell gives it the distinct shape of the bacteria and certain antibiotics work by inhibiting this cell wall synthesis this cell wall should be there otherwise this bacteria does not have existence because it is part of that bacteria so certain antibiotics that we take that act how it acts it act by inhibiting the synthesis of the cell wall the bacteria won't be able to synthesize the cell wall and what happened the bacteria will die that's how the antibiotics work most of the antibiotics work example penicillin there are also several other antibiotics which work in different way like uh, inhibiting ribosomes if the ribosomes are inhibited protein synthesis does not occur and the bacteria will die so there are several ways in which antibiotics work one way is by inhibiting the cell wall synthesis this cell wall it is very important you might have understood now because by looking at the structure of the bacterial envelope it is part of the bacteria important part of the bacteria and if it is destroyed if it, or if it is not produced means bacteria does not have existence and it will die or the bacteria won't be able to survive so this is the glycan chains cross linked with amino acids okay glycan chains 
told you it is polymer of N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid, NAMNAG. It will be going like sheets of this polymer and these sheets will be cross-linked by amino acid molecules. That is short polypeptides, mostly tetrapeptides. You can see tetrapeptides are cross-linking. And these tetrapeptides are also linked with help of interbridge. And this interbridge may have several additional amino acids. Interbridges may have more than four amino acids. These are also peptides. Interbridge are also peptides that is connecting two tetrapeptides. That is known as the interbridge. They may also be having several amino acids. So this is a image showing the peptidoglycan layer. You can see here the polymer peptidoglycan polysaccharide chains. A polysaccharide chains, the glycan portion in name NAG, in name NAG. It is forming a polymer, and these are cross-linked with uh, peptide peptides tetrapeptides okay and these cross links are both horizontal and vertical between glycan chains glycan chains you can see here sheets of peptidoglycan and it is connected in between with the help of tetrapeptides that is cross linking in horizontal way as well as vertical way with the help of tetrapeptides this is the bacterial envelope of a gram positive bacteria here you can see a inner uh, cell membrane that is the plasma membrane and the outer peptidoglycan which is the cell wall and outer to the cell wall there is no membrane since this is a gram positive bacteria and in the in between the peptidoglycan layer tecoic acid is also present tecoic acid and lipotecoic acids This is another uh, picture showing the same thing that is the cell wall and the lipotechoic acid and echoic acid. Uh, another thing is there that is the periplasmic space. This periplasmic space is the space between the plasma membrane and the peptidoglycan layer that is between plasma membrane and the cell wall that is known as the periplasmic space. So this tecoic acid and lipotecoic acid is present only in gram positive cell wall that we mentioned earlier. What is this tecoic and lipotecoic acid? What is the structure? It is a, this tecoic acid is a polymer of phosphate and ribitol or glycerol. And they are covalently attached to the membrane lipids. Okay, here you can see it is attached to the membrane lipids. Look, tecoic acid you can see the tecoic acid connecting to the membrane lipids here okay it is passing through the periplasmic space and connecting to the membrane lipids it is covalently connected to the membrane lipids and it is the major contributor to the negative charge of the cell exterior and also it function in the calcium binding these are the functions now about the cell wall exceptions the mycobacterium and relatives mycobacterium and the relative bacteria here the cell wall contains lots of waxy mycolic acids that is an exception or a variation that we see contains lots of waxy mycolic acids and this is attached covalently to peptidoglycan this waxy mycolic acids next about mycoplasma they have they do not have cell wall cell wall is altogether absent in them but that is a structural feature of these bacteria. and since there is no cell wall they do not have a definite shape and this mycoplasma we already had a session about mycoplasma they are parasites of animals then about RK in RK which is the third domain in the three domain system one of the domain RK in, th in them, the cell wall consists of pseudomurine. Okay, it is not the actual murine, it is pseudomurine. 
and also there are certain other chemically different cell wall materials in them. This is also a picture, this picture I had earlier shown the differences between the gram positive and gram negative uh, envelope or the here also you can see the difference between the cell wall of gram positive and gram negative bacteria in gram positive it is very thin and in gram negative it is very thin in gram positive it is very thick so this is the this is about gram staining gram staining we usually do to identify bacteria that is one of the basic technique to identify bacteria gram staining and this was invented by a danish scientist christian gram in 1884 and so and with the help of this staining procedure we can classify categorize prokaryotes into gram positive or gram negative those prokaryotes which have the additional membrane outside the cell wall fall under the gram negative category and this is based on actually based on this gram staining procedure so here you can see in the picture gram positive and gram negative bacteria the in the in the procedure in gram staining procedure there is fixation then uh, staining with crystal violet then there is iodine treatment and then again decolorization and again staining with safranin and after this uh, staining procedure if we see the uh, bacteria in purple color we can say it is gram positive bacteria if the gram uh, if the bacteria appears um, reddish or pinkish color then it is gram negative bacteria okay and this is mainly because of the uh, difference in the uh, bacterial envelope that is mainly in the presence of the outer membrane in gram negative bacteria you know the an, an additional outer membrane is present in gram negative bacteria and that's why this difference in staining so this is another picture showing gram staining procedure crystal violet is applied then iodine is applied then alcohol that is uh, uh, to uh, for decolorization then again staining with safranin okay if gram positive gram positive means it is purple uh um the bacteria will be sh uh, seen in purple color gram negative the bacteria will be seen in red or pinkish color and this ba about the bacterial cell membrane that is the plasma membrane it regulates what moves in and out of the cell in uh, means it is semi permeable okay and the diffusion of the most of the molecules is from high to high concentration to low concentration next about the bacterial cytoplasm this bacterial cytoplasm is semi fluid in nature and it is comprised of water and dissolved substances like salts proteins enzymes lipids and all other compounds or biochemicals which are necessary for its life and uh, Although all activities of life that occur in cells of higher organisms also occur in prokaryotic cells, they are not organized into plasma membrane bound compartments. We do not see membrane bound organelles inside the bacterial cell. That's meant by plasma membrane bound compartments. Okay, same as membrane bound plasma. What is this membrane bound organelles? Plasma membrane bound organelles. Usually, uh, say only membrane bound organelles. so all the activities which are taking place in a eukaryotic cell also occur in the bacterial cell means the metabolism of different uh, products and uh, using it for the uh, activities of the cell atp production everything is there inside the bacterial cell also but we do not see the membrane bound organelles in them and instead the these things means the associated enzymes which are Uh, involved in this metabolism and catabolism all those are dispersed in the cytoplasm itself or it may be sometimes attached to the inner regions of the plasma membrane and the only cytoplasmic structure that we can compare with the with that of the eukaryote is the ribosome the organelle 
which we find uh, this organelle also not membrane bound these are not membrane bound organelle we see we do not see any membrane bound organelle inside the bacterial cell we can see ribosomes inside the bacterial cell but it is different from that of the eukaryotic ribosome it is smaller in size also and other structure we see in the cytoplasm is the nucleoid then the plasmids then inclusion bodies then also we see certain structures um, that is internal membrane systems internal membrane systems can be seen inside the cytoplasm this what are these internal membrane uh, structures they are commonly known as mesosomes okay mesosomes these mesosomes are large infoldings of the cell membrane in the form of vesicles tubules or lamellae in the previous session when we discussed the structure we saw this mesosomes internal foldings okay mesosomes so these are just inter large infoldings of the cell membrane in, into the cytoplasm and the function of uh, mesosomes that is not fully understood then also it is attributed sometimes it is attributed to cell division and sometimes uh, some in some textbooks it is attributed to the increase in the surface area increasing the surface area okay it is not fully understood but there are structures like that also certain uh, scientists believe that these mesosomes or these infoldings are just artifacts created during processing of the specimen for electron microscopy means during processing of the specimen some changes will happen in the cell and these mesosomes are formed likewise means during processing the cells cell membrane might have uh, might be infolded into the cytoplasm and that is seen as mesosome some scientists say like that means they propose like that but in certain uh, textbooks we can see it is increasing the surface area its functions to increase the surface area or it is also helping in cell division next about the nucleoid nucleoid it is the area of the bacterial chromosome which uh, bacteria area of the cytoplasm which contains the bacterial chromosome that is known as the nucleoid so here the bacterial uh, chromosome is a dna dna molecule it is a double stranded circular dna molecule okay double stranded and circular dna molecule and here there is no true nucleus instead there is the nucleoid nucleoid is the area um, where the dna molecule is found that is known as the nucleoid here the spelling i have given it is uh, wrong it is in new c l e o i d okay nucleoid typing mistake and you can see this chromosomal dna of this bacteria it is displaced away from the center it is not always at the cen center of the cell it is displaced away from the center and it it is attached to the inner region of the cell membrane okay next about the plasmid plasmids are extra chromosomal dna and it is not part of the genome it is not part of the genome they are extra chromosomal means other than extra to the chromosomal dna the dna particles which is present in the bacteria is known as the plasmids and this plasmids carry genes for antibiotic resistance fertility etc and this plasmids can be transferred from one bacteria to another during the conjugation using this x plus and this will change the genetic character of the recipient bacteria and this plasmids it is a tool for genetic engineering we use this plasmids in genetic engineering that is in uh, uh, biotechnology in gene cloning we use plasmids as vectors it is a, an important tool in genetic engineering plasmids next inside the bacterial cytoplasm we can see ribosomes ribosomes uh, uh, the structure it is already clear to you because uh, there were classes on ribosomes in the last uh, semesters so this ribosome it is different from that of the eukaryotic ribosome it is smaller 
than the eukaryotic ribosome and also there are antibiotics which work against this ribosomes which inactivate ribosomes next about the inclusions there are so we can see so many inclusion bodies inside the bacteria like uh, so many granules which is uh, uh, what collecting sugars lipids etc okay these are known as inclusion bodies these are the pictures showing some of the inclusion bodies inside the bacterial cell then another important structure that we see in bacteria but we but not in all bacteria in some bacteria is the endospores and not all times we see this endospores we see only it it in certain periods and this endospores are seen only in bacteria which are known as endospore forming bacteria only certain group of bacteria forms this endospores example bacillus and clostridium and these are the hardest of the bacterial structures endospores it is difficult to kill with heat or chemical chemicals and during autoclaving that is sterilization process of uh, sterilization of uh, various materials we use autoclave and during this autoclaving it is 121 degree celsius is required at 15 lbs pressure to penetrate this thick coat and destroy the endospore and this endospore it is its purpose is survival survival in what unfavorable conditions that is the purpose of the endospore it is not for reproduction usually when we hear the name spore we connect it with reproduction in fungi spore formation is mainly for reproduction to increase in large numbers but in bacteria here this spore is not for reproduction it is for survival it is uh, formed during unfavorable conditions when nutrients are less and or if there is some unfavorable environment uh, condition around the bacteria it will form this endospore this is for survival it will remain dormant for even some some bacteria for several years it will remain dormant in this endospore condition and when favorable condition return they can emerge from this endospore forming the active bacteria so this is the stain preparation of uh, cell bacillus subtilis showing endospores this uh, endospores are seen in green color and the vegetative cells are seen in red color those parts we see in uh, green color are the endospores okay this is the bacillus subtilis bacteria sept bacillus subtilis forming endospores and this is uh, another bacteria that is penny bacillus alvei forming endospores that uh, bright a uh, bright um, that is white colored particle is the endospore this is an image taken with phase contrast microscopy so this endospore it is a dormant tough and non reproductive structure produced by some bacteria not all some bacteria as well as rk coming under the phylum firmicutes so we covered most of the structures that is the main structural features of bacteria like the uh, cell about the cell wall then the cell membrane about uh, uh, gram staining then about the internal membrane system that is the mesosomes then about pili flagella then the cytoplasm and the cytoplasmic structures like the genetic material or the nucleoid then the plasmid then the endospore inclusions so the main features structural features of bacteria are discussed if there are any doubts you can post it in the whatsapp group thank you